this program. Viewer discretion is advised. You're listening to Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, an audiobook by Christopher Colon. All rights reserved. Any resemblance to persons living or dead are purely coincidental. Chapter 24 I could tell that Zack was anxious to get back on the road. I had played the few riffs I knew from Sticks on Bruce's guitar. That seemed to calm him down. I had asked Layla if she could offer us any help with contacting her father. They hadn't been on speaking terms. She burned that bridge a while back. She was blacklisted, the same way Bruce was. She knew that they would mend their problems, but not soon, so we were on her own. She said that even after we meet her father, it might not be wise to mention our friendship with her. He might shun us the way he has his own flesh and blood. Family politics were a bitch. We had to wing it. She had given all of us some money. It wasn't much, especially because it was split four ways. Beggars can't be choosers. Bruce had given me his word that he would come forward, once we had our man. For the time being he would stay in Layla's care. As long as she took her pills I knew they would both be alright. While we were in town, I wanted to stop by and see postman Stephen, but by the time we were back in the hearse the post office was closed and we were too busy to add looking for Stephen on our to-do list. I had a feeling I would see him again. Maybe after this was all over, I'll come back and buy him a beer. Bruce had pulled me to the side before we left, and told me, Andy, be careful. I used to work at the casino and it's in a bad part of town. From what I've heard, the casino itself is beautiful, but the areas around the Ray del Sol, are bad news. It's surrounded by troublemakers. Gangs that run those streets. Arnie's men are a constant presence around the casino, protecting his business associates' interests. And most of the cops patrolling that area, are dirty. They're on the whale's payroll. You're bound to run into some kind of trouble. So you need to watch yourself. Whatever happens, don't let anyone stop you. Just keep going till you hit the casino. Once you're inside there'll be too many witnesses and security cameras for anybody to try anything stupid. Do you understand? I have a knack of predicting trouble and I have a bad feeling about this. That warning just took all the wind out of my sails, I wish you would have told me this a little sooner. We're leaving, right now. This was my last chance to talk to you before you go and face these perils. I'm just giving you a word of advice to keep your guard up. I want you to succeed. For your sake and Layla's. You should understand that. Thanks, I appreciate that. I'm glad Corey was too busy to hear this conversation, because he would go into full I told you so mode. We said our goodbyes to Layla and Bruce, and we're on the road with Zach. I sat up front with the driver, as usual, and my bandmates filled up the spacious backseat. Zach seemed to be charged up so you guys are in a heavy metal band. That kicks major ass. I engaged in conversation, mostly to be polite yeah, we're a band. Or more like, we were a band. Our drummer got killed, that's why we're out here doing what we're doing. I heard that you guys busted up Gabby Ellis place, and then you put out a cigarette in his one good eye. Man that is so fucking cool. Zack sounded like an enthusiastic teenager, not fully grasping the fact that I indeed, blinded a man. He was desensitized to the very real violence. He wasn't condemning it, he was encouraging it. I needed to correct him, it's not like we just walked into his place looking for a fight. He hit one of the girls, and things got escalated. He was threatening to kill us. He already killed my friend. He would have killed us too, if we didn't take action first. That's cool, man. I get it. He killed your friend and threatened you. You couldn't let him get away with shit like that. Never turn the other cheek. You got him, before he got to you. Fuck him, he had it coming, Zack then changed the subject, don't worry about me. I won't snitch you out to the whale or his guys. Bruce paid me first, so my loyalty is to him. My loyalty is usually to the highest bidder. But I'm not going to run to Arnie's men and tell them I know where to find you. That's not my style. I'm not going to lie to you, if they approach me and make it worth my while, I will sell you out. Sorry, cousin. I did have to give him credit for his honesty, thanks for being truthful. At least I know where you're coming from. It's better than having blind trust in some other people's loyalty. I heard Corey shift around in his seat, knowing I was talking about him. At least he kept his big mouth shut. Curious, I ask so what do you do? For money? 
do you usually give strangers rides for cash? If the price is right, I'll do it. I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. A true renaissance man. Some things I do, are a little, above the law, if you will. But like Aleister Crowley said, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. What does that mean? I was curious. It means that you should be able to do what you want to do. No law should stop you from doing it. If you feel it's the right thing to do, then it shouldn't be illegal. We are all masters of our own fate and our decisions will decide our destiny. Like what you guys did to Gabby. He was going to kill you so you blinded him. Some people would say you went too far. But really, what would the cops done if you went to them? Gabby is too well connected, for you to get any real justice. So when you blinded him, that was the justice you deserved. I would say you guys didn't go far enough. If I were you, I wouldn't have stopped at just blinding Gabby. I would have killed him, for killing my friend. Plain and simple. I hated to sound like my Sunday school teacher but doesn't an eye for an eye, just lead to everybody being blind. Zach laughed I like your choice of words. I didn't mean to. He interjected, come on. I thought you guys were heavy metal. Don't tell me we are having a difference of opinion here. I would think you guys would subscribe to the philosophies of Aleister Crowley, Ayn Rand, Friedrich Nietzsche, and Anton Sander Levy. Power of self. Survival of the fittest. Isn't that part of the lifestyle? Well look where it's gotten us. Arnie Ellis is out for our blood. I was trying to rationalize with Zach. So you're telling me you guys never read the satanic bible, he asked unbelievingly. No, I can't say I did. I guess it's safe to assume you have. Zack's eyes got wide, oh yeah. Reading satanic bible changed my life. I'm a full-fledged member of the church of Satan. Some people get all bent out of shape, because they hear the name, church of Satan, and all they can think about is about cults, eating babies, and shit like that. It's not. It's more of a way of life. It's about being an individual and not conforming to the standards that religions usually impose on on their followers. Religion is a tool used to get people under control, by telling them how to live their lives. Religion tells you what to say, how to act, and what to eat. Once you get people to follow those rules you can get them kill and die for those beliefs. Look at those Muslim extremists strapping bombs to themselves. Those people are seriously brainwashed. In that religion, you have to stop whatever you're doing, five times a day, face east, and pray. That's control. There's nothing I want to do five times a day, even if it was something I like to do. You could tell me that a Playboy centerfold was going to give me a blow job five times a day, and I would get tired of that over time. Then you have these religious leaders. These people that claim that they have a special link with God, are either liars or fucking crazy. The Pope is just another man, just like me. The same goes to all those evangelical preachers, that have television shows early in the morning, asking for money. It's all just scare tactics to get old ladies, that are a little too close to death, to give up their social security checks, to get in the good graces of the invisible man that lives in the clouds. Meanwhile, as the weak will give away percentages of their income, that they can't afford to give away, these preachers are driving luxury cars and flying around in personal jets. I'm not buying it. There's no such thing as a lap Satanist or non-practicing Satanist. You either are or you aren't. There are tons of people who latch onto a religion, just so they have a side to stand on. But those people won't even follow some of the basic principles of the religion they claim to believe in. They're hypocrites. Some religions have noticed that they have casual followers and have created orthodox branches, just to keep the devout above the rest of flock. They can't even get along with their own peers. If you are a Satanist, you are automatically devout and orthodox. I wanted to point out the flaws in his argument, for a person who claims to be so anti-religion, you certainly know an awful lot about religion. Zach looked a little offended while I was raised in a very religious household. My parents tried their best to keep me blind to the rest of the world. As I got older and stopped living under their wing, I got a chance to see the real world outside of our home. It woke me up. It's very easy to brainwash a child into believing they are being monitored by a man who can punish or reward them for their actions. Isn't that exactly what Santa Claus does? But there is no Santa Claus. So what does that say about God? Some of more famous detractors of religion had started out in a spiritually heavy household. Friedrich Nietzsche was the son of a preacher and even studied Christianity for some time, 
and he was the father of the nihilist philosophical movement. Remember Sam Kinison, the comedian? He was a preacher earlier in his life, but when he became a comedian, he had some of the most blasphemous material. Even Anton Sander Levy got inspiration to start the Church of Satan, after watching the hypocritical actions of men. He was with this traveling tent show. On Saturday nights he would play the organ music for erotic dancers, and the local men would see these strippers and go crazy. Yet on Sunday morning, when Anton played the organ for the religious services, those same men were at the sermons, acting pious as if nothing happened the night before. It's better to be an open sinner than to be a false saint. It's ridiculous to dedicate yourself to a set of rules, that contradicts every instinct man has cultivated in his evolution. You guys gotta go to one of the black masses that they have at the satanic church I go to. I wondered if Zach realized that in his rejection of traditional religion he had fallen for the same self-righteous bullshit, he swore he was against. He was recruiting us, and sounding like every Jehovah's Witness, or airport hair Krishna, that had ever tried to get me to convert. I was waiting for him to give a pamphlet to help me make up my mind. He didn't. Then I asked if being a Satanist is all about being a nonconformist and an individual, why would I have to join their church? There was no more preaching after that. Please visit twostrangersonepodcast.net.